It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python from Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters. Or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is continuing to operate as an essential business under New York City executive order to provide assistance with the COVID-19 outbreak. Most employees are working remotely, while a few are working in the Adafruit factory to help manufacture and ship desperately needed PPE to the surrounding area and beyond. This week, Lamore was appointed to the Small Business Sector Advisory Council by the New York City Mayor. This council will serve as critical links to disseminate information about reopening and provide guidance to shape the city's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Adafruit thanks the mayor for the opportunity to help restart the New York economy. Adafruit continues to manufacture face shields for distribution through the Adafruit shop. We are also sourcing materials made in the USA that can be made into masks and are working on engineering simple ways to make it into masks for all who need them. CircuitPython 5.4.0 Beta 0 was released on Monday and has many new features and improvements, including sleep support while time.sleep, RGB matrix support on the STM32F4, AESIO added for C level AES, display IO enabled on the STM32H7 boards, and much more. Seven new boards were added, including the Simil and the Teensy 4.1. Scott streamed some of the latest work intended for the 5.4.0 release, including a demonstration of lower power usage by shutting down the microcontroller during sleep. With the ESP32 S2 finally in our hands, we've been working towards getting CircuitPython running on it. Scott live streamed getting the CircuitPython Rebel and wiring up digital I.O. to get an LED blinking. Brandon Ashworth has also gotten an LED to blink on the ESP32 S2 using CircuitPython. The Teensy 4.1 microcontroller board has been released. Sales have opened up for the new development board. It features improvements over the Teensy 4.0 board to include additional pins, a micro SD slot, and a 10100 Ethernet 6 pin interface. Teensy 4.1 also includes a USB host port broken out to a 5-pin through-hole header on the inside of the PCB, as was done on the 3.5-3.6 versions. The board is compatible with CircuitPython 5.4.0 Beta 0 and higher. Check out pjrc.com for more technical specs and purchasing. Microsoft Developer presents a series of 44 free YouTube videos entitled Python for Beginners. Microsoft states, Probably the largest hurdle when learning any new programming language is simply knowing where to get started. That is why we, Chris and Susan, decided to create this series about Python for beginners. Even though we don't cover everything there is to know about Python in the course, we want to make sure we give you a foundation on programming in Python, starting from common everyday code and scenarios. At the end of the course, you'll be able to go learn on your own, for example with docs, tutorials, or books. Check it out on YouTube. Microsoft has started a Discord server specifically aimed at Python. The server follows the Microsoft Open Source Code of Conduct. The Microsoft Python server can be joined by visiting aka.ms slash python discord. CircuitPython received a native library to drive RGB matrices last month using the SAMD51 and NRF52840 microcontrollers. This week, Lady Ada tested out support in the library for STM32F405. There is now a plugin for Atom with support for serial outputs, Python REPL, and plotting of data using CircuitPython. The plugin contains the code from the fsync on save package to ensure data is flushed to the device immediately after saving, therefore preventing loss or corruption of data when working with CircuitPython devices. The plugin should be compatible with Windows and Linux as the serial port library should be cross-platform. The maintainer is open to any form of feedback in the form of GitHub issues or pinging Joseph in the CircuitPython channel on the Adafruit Discord server. Check out the source code on GitHub at github.com slash jos-b. The make code for microbit beta now includes support for Python. The beta is available for testing. Visit makecode.microbit.org beta to give it a try. CycleMatch on Twitter posts CyberDuck, 
a self-contained computer that can edit and run Python files with a USB keyboard input and a display. And it's shaped like a disaster recovery duck. Key features include USB keyboard input, a display for showing output, a text editor for creating and editing Python code, and a REPL-like command line for entering Python commands. The project deliberately takes bits and pieces from others to work. Check out Twitter for details and links. Adafruit has always been an open source hardware company, predating the Open Source Hardware Association certification process. We have finally finished submitting all of our hardware to Oshawa for certification as open source. This week, 102 new boards were certified, including the Circuit Playground Express, Circuit Playground Bluefruit, and the Hollowing M4 Express. Build a serverless Martian weather display with CircuitPython and AWS Lambda. Visit idk.dev for details. Winterbloom is working on the new Hostess USB Featherwing host board, which will be CircuitPython compatible. It will have a SAMD21 microcontroller chip and a USB-A port. It'll work with USB MIDI and HID devices for now, but it'll be open source for simple addition of other features. Follow Thea Valkyrie on Twitter to follow the process. CircuitPython NeoSprite is a library for updating NeoPixel arrays from sprite files such as bitmaps. The Vector.io library builds on a Feather M4 Express and draws concrete shapes that are composed into a vector shape, which is put into a Display.io group for display. Kinger North posted a number of video tutorials on CircuitPython including random numbers and timers, using servos, and analog in mapping in PWM. Cedar Grove Studios posts to Twitter a large mint tin LED clock. It features battery backup and a real-time clock module with automatic daylight saving adjustments. It uses a rotary encoder for setting time, date, brightness, and enabling or disabling the ticking sound, all in CircuitPython. Cedar Grove Studios also posts to Twitter a sneak peek of the enclosure base for a project, a restoration of an heirloom cuckoo clock incorporating original antique whistles and gong, activated by servos and a solenoid. It uses an Adafruit Cricut controlled by a Pi badge and CircuitPython with a custom Stemma host featherwing. The clock uses the Cedar Grove Studios Clock Builder Library, a collection of modules and libraries for building standalone RTC clocks. Check out Hackster for a donkey car simulator with RC controller. It uses the RoboHat MM1 and CircuitPython. Dave Brichetti built two versions of a smart thermostat, one with a Raspberry Pi and the other using CircuitPython on an Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. Brian Enigma posts to Twitter a quarantine day counter using Adafruit Pi Portal. SimpleTest is a Python library that helps write and run tests on CircuitPython. It aims to mimic, as much as possible, the PyTest API. Redraw on GitHub posts a project to blink an LED when a satellite is passing by using a Wemos D1 Mini and MicroPython. Create a CircuitPython build environment for Spresence on Windows 10 with Windows Subsystem for Linux. Check out an example of CircuitPython that allows a Nina B302 to communicate with an HTTP World Time server via a Wi-Fi coprocessor based on Nina W102 in 802.11 mode. Christopher posts an eye-opening comparison of using join versus plus to combine strings in Python. Check it out on towarddatascience.com. The number of CircuitPython-supported microcontrollers and single-board computers grows every week. This week, there were seven new boards added to CircuitPython, including the OpenMV H7 and the STM32F746 Discovery. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are four new Python on hardware-related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Create high-fidelity light paintings with an Adafruit Clue, CircuitPython, and DotStar LEDs in this guide from Phil B. And Practice your music with a Clue metronome, including customizable tempo and time signature, as well as a 3D printed stand to go with it in this guide from John Park. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 227. There are no new libraries this week, but there are many updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest bundle. Included in this week's update from the CircuitPython team, Dan has been finishing up the Adafruit BLE services library. It provides BLE services that work with the Bluefruit Playground app. 
He has a CircuitPython program that communicates with the app in the same way that the original Arduino UF2s did. The app is not the only way to use the Adafruit Services Library. You'll be able to use the library as a BLE central as well to get sensor data or control NeoPixels or dot stars. The library required some changes to the Packet Buffer class core CircuitPython BLE support. He finally finished those changes earlier this week after some false starts. Jeff helped with the setup of WebLate to make it easier for the community to contribute translations of CircuitPython. Please help us out by adding or improving translations. He started a new project this week to create a version of Adafruit SD card which is written in C instead of Python. We hope that this new version will have higher performance and leave more memory free for your Python code and objects. Initial results for a single file on a single card show that reading a large file 4096 bytes at a time became about 40% faster. However, additional testing on multiple SD cards and CircuitPython boards is indicated. While working on the code, he was inserting and removing the SD card repeatedly. He thinks mechanical stress was probably the reason this card broke in two, but software bugs are not entirely ruled out. Melissa focused mostly on adding I2C protocol to the Adafruit CircuitPython Bitbang I.O. library. This was fairly difficult because it seemed any existing examples implementing this were written just slightly differently or largely incomplete. One of the sources that she found most helpful was looking at how CircuitPython had implemented it, and using that as a base worked pretty well. She also checked the output while running hardware I2C with her logic analyzer and compared that to the output and she was able to get some good data when she tested with the BME280. We've had a call for CircuitPython translations out for some time. This week we implemented the open source project WebLate, making it even easier to add or improve translations. Sign in with an existing account such as GitHub, Google, or Facebook, and start contributing through a simple web interface. PyCon 2020 Online continues with many talks, tutorials, and more already posted. Visit us.pycon.org 2020 online to find links to all of the available content, or sign up for the mailing list to receive updates. Check out talks, tutorials, and Startup Row along with a virtual expo hall. The USA Science and Engineering Festival is to offer their popular XSTEM conference in a virtual format. XSTEM All Access is an engaging, entertaining, educational, and interactive online STEM experience for kids. Presentations will be geared towards a middle school and high school level audience, grades 6 to 12, but kids and adults of all ages are welcome to join. The daily presentations will be weekdays, May 13th through 19th, 2020, from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. There is no cost to attend. Register on their website, usasciencefestival.org. Virtually Maker Fair, featuring makers and projects primarily responding to COVID-19, will be May 23, 2020. It provides an opportunity for makers to connect, share their projects, and talk about what they do and how they do it. It will take place completely online through video sessions over a 24-hour period and as curated collection of maker exhibits. The goal is to help makers present their work to a broader public to gain understanding, support, and increasing participation. Visit MakerFair.com for more information. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26, including two conference days with keynotes, talks, lightning talks, and poster sessions, and two sprint days with multiple sprint teams. Attending the conference days will require a ticket, and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced they are holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the CFP and the conference. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 18,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.